Okay, so, so as I mentioned, right, the, the question I want to deal with is um, when we're talking about people who, again, bracketing the question that, I, that you dealt with last week um, as to whether people who will never quite reach um, halachic bar da'at, the status of majority and the chayyim mitzvah, whether they have to be educated, and if so, how, and by who, by whom, I think. Um, the question I want to deal with is people who um, who are definitely chayyim mitzvahs, but their education costs more because they need, they have special needs, because they're reading disabilities, they have attention uh, issues, whatever the case may be, and they can't be in a full size class. So. It, what should be the communal responsibility, recognizing that the community is already taxed um, in terms of uh, how much money goes into the school system, tuition, uh, and the like? Um, what is the communal obligation to come up with even more resources to help the people who can't fund uh, themselves because their their education would be even more costly? So the the way this starts is the the Gemara in Baba Basra Dafkaf. I'm a bit, so Chaf Halaf on Halaf records the Takana of Yeshua ben Gamla. So Yeshua ben Gamla is an interesting figure. We don't really know who he is. Um, this Yeshua ben Gamla, meaning we know there is a Yeshua ben Gamla who um, was seemingly problematic, who was in the time of Bayat Shani, he was a Kohen Gadol, and his wife was very wealthy and bribed the king and made him Kohen Gadol. Yeah, that's what we know about one Yeshua ben Gamla. Um, the Rishonim basically divide. Some Rishonim say, well, this Yoshua ben Gamla, who is responsible for people learning Torah, that can't be the same person. The two different Yoshua ben Gamlas. Uh, others say, no, it really is. And either he was a good person, but he wasn't the best, and therefore it's so problematic that he was coming down. No. Or, look, people are complicated, right? Or he started out more corrupt and he became, go whatever, some sort of combination, whoever he is. So the way the Gemara gets into this is that the second paragraph of Abbasra deals with neighborly laws, where, what obligations I have towards my neighbors. One of them is that I can't just open up shop um, if it's going to create noise and foot traffic in my property, um, right in my, like, my, my area. Um, you know, like you shouldn't be blasting music in the middle of the night. Every time I think of violation, you'll, you'll appreciate this because you live in, you've, Luke grew up in the Heights, but every time I have an example of people who violate every possible norm of what neighbors should be doing, I think of all my years living in the Heights and you had more than I did, right? But like, yes, you should not only start playing your music at two in the morning. That shouldn't happen. I don't know why it happens, but it's, what? You gotta start at three. It's usually not time to show up yet. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a phenomenon. It's a phenomenon. It really is wonderful. Yes, great. Um, so, um, the... So in that context, Gamar says, well, one of the things you can't stop is if someone wants to set up a school, a school for kids, to teach them Torah. And what's the reason? So the Gemara says, because it was the Takana Vishuv and Gamla. What was the Takana Vishuv and Gamla? Someone want to tell me, you read the Gemara, so what's the Takana Vishuv and Gamla? Yeah? Exactly. Right? So the Gemara basically says that originally parents taught their children. If your parent didn't know how to teach you, you didn't learn Torah. Then they said, you know what, let's set up central schools um, in Yerushalayim. Now that, who does that help? That helps people who have parents who are maybe not educated but have means and a will to teach their kids, so they'll get them to Yerushalayim. But it doesn't help people who don't have the means to get to Yerushalayim or don't have parents. So Yeshua ben Gamla said, you know what, we need a Takana. And the Takana is, in every local place, we must have a school. And we start teaching kids six or seven, right, which, as we showed him, note, probably means whenever the kid is ready, right, and this is communally funded. In that context, the Gemara puts two seemingly related um, qualifications on this. One is the class size is something like 25, right, is 25, and at 40 something changes. Um, it's not clear what the Gemara is saying, we'll get to that in a second, but there is some sort of class 
size that is relevant to this, and the, the number, magic number is 25. Okay? The second is that there's an issue of commuting here, right? Which is that you cannot force kids to commute city to city. You can within the city as long as there's no danger. So if there is a river, then you can't make them travel even within the city. If there's a bridge, it depends. If it's a good bridge, you can. If it's a bad bridge, you can't. Now, we'll see in a second what the relationship between these are. So let's talk about it, okay? When the Gemara says that this rule, that you must have a school, and that's if there are 25 students, what does the 25 student thing mean? Right, what does that mean? Anyone talk to you? I know some of you got through two, so you saw the summary of the two main shitot in the Rishonim. Shulchan Aruch quotes, and the Ramah quote both of them. So what, what is this 25 person thing? Right, what, is this, what does it mean? And some of you did Shulchan Aruch, so what does it mean? So, there's, there's a, there's a makhloka. Tosvo believes that this is how the rule works. 25 is not a class size for the benefit of students. 25 is the minimum number of students in a given location where it's legitimate to tax the community to force them to set up a school. But it's just not fair. If you have a city and there's only three kids between first and eighth grade, I mean, I feel very bad for those kids. But you're going to force the community to come up with the funds to set up a school system for them? That's a lot of money. So even though we feel bad, if there's less than 25 kids, so wh whichever parents want to fund, will fund. And whoever doesn't want to, so tough luck. Right, that's Tosos. So the way Tosos reads the Gemara is up till 25, not inclusive. The community has no obligation to set up a school system at all. When you hit 25, they must set up a teacher. Until 39, one teacher teaches all the kids, right? So 0 to 24, no public school system. 25 to, 20, to 39, one teacher. 40, what happens? One teacher and one assistant teacher. 50, two teachers, right? That's toast vote. So according to toast vote, the main rule that guides class size and things like that at first glance is not what is for the best in the best interest of students, but how much can we push the community to fund students? When you hit 25, that's a reasonable thing to do, is to set up a school for 25. But less than that, it's a lot of money to set out for not so many kids, and you just can't ask that the community, even though some kids will fall through the cracks. Right? That seems to be what Tosos believes. That's what Ramban understands Tosos. Okay? According to Tosos, then, what, what is all this commuting thing going on? Right? What are these limits on commuting that are going on in the Sugya? That's partially defining the location. Right? That's the, right? Meaning, if there are 25 kids in one place and 20 kids in the other, right? So let them commute, right? Or if there are 13 kids on one side of the river, and 13, or 20, let's say 25 kids on one side of the river and 20 kids on the other, right? Commute, but if it's dangerous, if we don't, that's Tosos. The Ramban says, no, that's not how it goes. You can't tell me that you're not allowed, that kids are gonna fall through the cracks. 25 is a maximum, is a class size. Zero to 24, how many teachers do you get? One. 25 to 39, what do you get? One in assistance. 40 and up, you get two teachers. But 25 is there for the good of the students, not for the good of the community, to limit how much we can force them to pay. But while we're setting up a school system, we care about what's most effective educationally, and 25 is the max, where we set up a class without assistance. Okay? That's the Ramban. So if you just stop there, what you would get is the following. Everyone agrees that ideally there should be a school system for all Jewish kids, and the community has to come up with the funds because not everyone can afford it themselves. Right? That's the ideal. But, 
According to the Ramban, there's a second factor, and that is the good of the kids. How effectively can they learn? And the community is obligated to set up class structures that will be effective for the students. According to Toast Vote, that's not quite how this works. Meaning, maybe 25 is good for students, maybe it's not. But, it's better than nothing, and we want every kid to be educated, but there's only so much we can demand from the community. And the main question we have to ask when we're setting up schools is not what is ideal for each student, because what's ideal for each student might just create an undue burden on the community, right? You have the money for your kid, that's great, but we're talking about communal funding. Coach has said the main question we ask is, you know, how can we most effectively use resources because there's only so much that we can ask from the community. Right, that is, right off the bat is like the simple, simplest understanding of Tosfut versus the Ramban. Okay, yes. Okay, good. So now, let's ask the following, okay? Well, you can mean a lot of things by that, but let's, let's try. So, the Emunat Shmuel was asked the following question. That's in the Pitzchei Chuvay number three. What happens if you turn around and you say, nowadays, kids cannot concentrate in a group of 25? It's not happening, right? It's not happening. Nowadays, people can only effectively learn in classes of 10 or 12 or 15, whatever. So, is the community obligated to provide class, classes of 10 to 12 or 15 or whatever number you want to pick? So, what would you say? According to Ramban, very possibly. Right? Because class size was saying the community has to fund what's effective for kids. And if what's effective now is 15, then you got to find the money for 15. Now, you could argue that even in the back of his mind, the Ramban will say, no, at some point what's best for students is so onerous that you can't ask it. But at first glance, you would say, no, no, no. The Ramban really would say the class size thing tells you that in addition to caring about the community, we care about the kids. And if the kids can't handle it, so then you got to come up with the money for it. And the Amunah Shmuel postulates that way. That if nowadays kids can only handle classes of 10, 12, 15, then that's what you got to pay for. That community needs to come up with money for that. What do you think for toast, folks? It, right, in this simple schema, right, no. Because it's not about, no one ever said 25 is ideal for kids. It's just like, it's passable for kids, and that's what the community can afford. But maybe they can't afford 10, you know, classes of 10. That's very expensive, even if it's better. Right? You, you have the money, great, but I can't force the community to do that. That's not their moral obligation. Now, you could create a hybrid position, which might actually be with the Amun Shmuel thing Tosfut is, which is, no, maybe Tosfut actually doesn't mean that. Maybe Tosfut means that you can't force the community to set up a class of three. Why? Because that's, that's not a full class. And it's not fair to ask the community to fund not full classes. But maybe Tosos would hold that the community has to fund any full class, but what counts as a full class is actually societally dependent, right? Meaning, you could say that Toso does care about the students. He just says the community, he cares about the students if you can fill a full class, right? It's not fair to force the community to set up a school system for three kids. But if nowadays a full class is 10, so then it's totally legitimate to say the community should fund 10 because that's a full class, right? So it's possible to create a hybrid position where Tosa also cares. Um, now, another possible hybrid, which is the Archa Shulchan, is the following. Does Tosa really believe that if there aren't 25 kids, you don't have to set up a school system? So simple understanding of Tosos is yes, because he cares about forcing people to not pay, right? He, he, that's what he cares about. Um, and that's really how Shulchan Aruch takes it. The Aruch HaSholchan doesn't believe that. The Aruch HaSholchan says it can't be that Tosos would think that anyone is ever allowed to fall through the cracks. That, that just can't be. So Tosos says, no, no, no. Here's what Tosos, uh, this is what Tosos must mean. It must mean that the Class size is integrated into the commuting problem, which is, Tosos means as follows. Less at 25, you can no longer force kids to commute. Less than 25 
if there is an option that is commutable, even though it's not ideal because you have to commute, you can make the kids commute. But if there's no school system at all, then even Tosu would agree that you have to set up a school system even for five kids. Okay, one more time, right? There's two qualifications that Gamara put on the school size. The school question. One was class size, the other is commuting. The Archa Shulchan says that those are related, right? That the way he integrates those two is as follows. Four Tosos. Zero to 24, if there's a school within commuting distance, even if it's minorly dangerous to get there, right? There's a bridge, all those things, right? You can still force the schools to combine. but you don't have to set up a local school. 25, you have to set up a local school and you can't make the kids commute. But if there's no school, you still have to set it up even if it's 10 kids locally. Then at 25, you have to set up a local school, right? At 39, at 40, you have to set up a school teacher plus assistant, et cetera, right? So the commuting question is integrated. So zero to 24, it's not no school, and zero to 24 is no school if there is a commutable option. Okay, that's that's the Archa Shulchan's conceptualization of it. And you know, with my guys, I dealt a, a, a bit also with this commuting. What, is commu what, what does this mean for modern schools, right? Meaning now roads are much safer. And the Gemara it seems like commuting is pr fundamentally a problem of safety, right? Um, but it also, at some level, seems to be about defining community. So, you know, how do you deal with that? Like, I assume some of you have commuted to school, right? Like, I know I commuted to school, not elementary school. I commuted, you know, ten minutes, but like high school, I commuted from Staten Island to the Five Towns, right? Like, it was a schlep, um, uh, right? I assume some of you commuted. Yeah, I, okay, you, you went to Heights, S-A-R-S? I went to Central for a year. Okay. Not, not to be fair, it's pretty close, but it still could take a long time to get from the Heights to S-A-R. It's surprising. It's like half an hour. What? A long time, it's like half an hour. No, I understand. So you have a, yes, but it, you know. But yes, it's not, it's not as easy as it, as it should be. Um, so, uh, so now let me ask you, okay, with, with that basic background, what would you say? You now have students in the class who cannot function in a normal class size, right? Again, take your pick, dyslexia, ADHD, right? Whatever learning disability they have, right? ESL, right? Right, but it doesn't even have to be a disability, right? In, right, an immigrant who English is a second language, and it's just hard, right? It takes, you, you know, whatever. Right, like if, I, I know in YU, like there's special personnel to deal with ESL, right? It's a little bit ridiculous, right? Because whatever, right? They have this, you know, the rule is anyone not from America, you presume they need ESL, but like they tried to put my friends from England, Australia, and Canada in ESL, and like they're trying to explain to them, right? Like one of my friends is like, has a very, very, very posh London accent, right? And he's like, I don't need to be in there. They call it English because of England, you know, like, right, like, um, <laughs> you know, but uh, they, it, it was really weird, whatever. But whatever the case may be, it costs more money, right? It costs more money. So does the community need to come up with the funding? So what do you think? What do you think? Based on just what you've, right, just what we've talked about, what do you think? What does it depend on? Yeah. Okay, so I think everyone would agree, right? I think this, everyone would agree the following. I think you're right. Let's say you have 50 kids in your, in your area, 25 of them. Um, let's say are uh, English, native English speakers, let's take these again, native English speakers, and 25 are ESL, right? English is a second language. So they're, they don't need, they can handle a class of 25, they just can't handle being in the same class as everybody else because they need to learn English as part of it, right? I think everybody would agree, even Toast, everyone would agree. In that case, even though they have a special need, look, 25 is that magic number, right? And now, so, you know, so create one class for ES and one for the, for the native English speakers. Right? I think that would be obvious, right? I think that's 100% true. You're right. That's an easy case because you're talking about someone who has a special need but doesn't necessarily affect class size, right? But now let's say you have 25 kids 
who can go into a regular class, and 25 kids who can't, but they also can't be in a class of 25, right? They need classes of 10 or 15, right? So if they were regular, right, if they were not, right, if they didn't have any learning disabilities, then it would be two classes of 25. But now their educational needs require a class of 25 and two classes of 12, 13. So now what? So now what? So what do you what do you think? Yeah. Okay, good. So, very good. So if you hold like the Emunah Shmuel, which as we said, there's two ways of justifying the Emunah Shmuel. One is to say, like the Ramban, that class size is there for the good of the students, right? Or two, is that even Toso believes that class size is for the good of the students, it just means you need to fill up a class. You can't have a class of five. So then, what could you argue? Let's, let's, let's spell it out. That if you could fill up a full class as judged by people who have this particular learning disability, then you would be obligated to set it up, right? So for one kid, you wouldn't. But let's say 10 kids, if they could handle 10 kids and there were 10 of them, you would have to set it up. But if there were five, you wouldn't, right? Good. That, I think, is possible, right? According to that, what you're saying is that really, really, really be possible like the conceptualization of the Rambam. And how do you formulate the Takana of Yeshua and Gamla? The Jewish community is, is obligated to provide education for everybody in whatever way is going to be effective for them. And if that means smaller classes, that means smaller classes, and you just got to figure out how to do it, right? And therefore, the obligation for a community to somehow dig deep into its pockets and make it possible for people to, um, to succeed in a Jewish school, even if they have really demanding needs, is merely an expression of this talk about Yeshua ben Gamla. Right? And that seems to be the position of Rebel Yashif. So if you look at number eight, just in one line, right, and this is pointed out by um, both of you, Zoldan in his article on special needs in Hebrew and uh, in the... Um, Nishmat Avram, he writes, Shechayavim l'amin moreh l'mispar amatim shal yodim. V'amispar shal chavei yodim l'amin yodim regilim. He says, yeah, you have to come up with a teacher for the right number for them. That's it. Right? I mean, the way he understands that the Gana Vishu and Gamla, like in the light of the Ramban, essentially, is the community is obligated to find educational support for every kid at their level. That's what the Tekana means. Whatever that costs, you got to figure it out. Okay? You just got to figure it out. That's the communal obligation. Right? And what that looks like, there's been a lot of attempts of people to figure out what does that look like in the modern world, right? Because we're used to a tuition model, right? So what does it mean? Does that mean, and many people have suggested that um, tuition model is wrong. It's not really what should be going on, right? Either a tuition model plus a communal essential tax, right? Where Jews should pitch in whether or not they have kids in school. Um, in, in Toronto, right, Kelman has suggested that um, people, that we should create a norm where people leave a certain percentage of their will to a communal fund that funds the school system, right? There have been different suggestions of how we can sort of create an e something in line with the ethos of, your, of your, the Takana of Yeshua Ben Gamma, right? Um, that's one possibility. Okay. But, let's say you hold, like, Tosfos, right, in the extreme formulation of it. That, look, we feel for every student. But what Takana Yeshua Ben Gamla says is there's a limit to what we can demand from the community. Even though we realize that kids might fall through the cracks, but there's a limit to what we demand. So what would you say? Presumably not, right, because it's really expensive, right? Or even according to Ramban, potentially you could argue that, look, you're obligated to set up a class size, but for students who have normal needs, right? But once needs are beyond normal, that can't, right? Maybe even the Ramban would argue, right? That we, we're, you're obligated to set up class 
classes for every kid, but there is a school. It's just that this kid can't, concede, can't succeed in this school. And to give the kid what they need, that's like really demanding. Maybe even the Ramban would say you can't do that. Right? Maybe the, even the Ramban would say, look, you have to set up a class even if there's five kids. But if there's a, already a class of 20 kids and they could just join it, but they can't succeed because they need a class of five, maybe Takani Yishuv and Gamla, even according to the Ramban, can't demand that. Because there is some limit on what we can ask the community to do. So if that's the case, then you would say, maybe not. Okay? So, Ramosha and Roshul Zalman both came up with interesting positions. Ramosha Feinstein said, listen, it's true. Everything we just said is true. And based on the Zakhan Yishuv and Gamla, it is not plausible to say that we can tax the Jewish community to that point. Where, look, we are already overburdened by how much our schools cost and how much they're in debt, right? And Corona is just going to make this worse, right? Meaning the funds have been drained from the community and the schools have spent so much to, to go online. I mean, it, 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 it's a nightmare, right? I mean, who knows what the next few years are going to look like, right? Between less money, less income coming in, less stuff up being given, the school, right? I mean, it's crazy. So Ramosha says, look, Takani Yishuv and Gamla, it's not. But if the community can come up with the money, it's still, they still should. Under what paradigm? Staka. Staka. It's a different mechanism, but it still exists. And therefore, look, Takani Yishuv and Gamla is like a basic obligation. Staka means that, look, if I have extra money, this is where I should be, right, directing it. Or this is where my Meister money should be going, right? All those different rules, like the community should come up with it. It's not that going to use Shubin Gamla. You're right. It's not part of our obligation towards the school system. But it is something that ideally the, that the community should come up with the money because it's a legitimate stuck concern. It's a Talmud Torah concern for people who can't afford it. What else is that but stuck us? So, it's not that kind of issue in Gamla, but still, it's one of those things that should be ranked high on the priority list. Like, the problem is if a community has the means to do this and makes it that the kids have to go to public school, like, that's the problem. They don't have the means. So then you'll say, look, it's not in the basic that kind of issue in Gamla. They don't have the means. There are limits to how much stock I can be forced to pay. I get it. But if you have the money, so it is an obligation, means in stock up. Rishon Lozaman Arbach has a maybe even more fascinating suggestion. And he says, it's not the kind of Yishuv and Gamla, it's not even Staka. You know what it is? The community has an obligation to set up public health care, which is a sheer for another time, but Rishon Lozaman takes it as a given. And he says, they have to take care of the health of people, and if people have learning disabilities, right, just like you would have to deal, the community has to find a way to help people medically, so they have to help people with their disabilities in learning. And therefore, there is an obligation, but it's from a different mechanism, from a different conceptualization. It's not from the world of Chinuch. It's not the world of Tekan Yishuv and Gamla. It's from the world of public health. So that's like a brief scheme, right? A brief sort of thematic overview of this question. But I think that the questions it raises are really important because, like I said, Right, one of the questions the community keeps asking itself is how is it how are we going to continue right with our school system which is so expensive right and what many have pointed out is that Takani Yishuv and Gamla already tells us that it's wrong to have a system where it's fully tuition based and not an expectation that every member of the community whether or not they have kids in schools somehow participate in this system now what that means different people have different suggestions. Right? And then you, it's a legitimate question, I think, to ask whether the community should be, part, you know, contributing to lower the cost of the schools or really just the Talmud Torah part of the schools. Right? right? But our schools are a lot more than Talmud Torah. We're paying because now you have private secular education and because you have private, right, you have clubs and teams and whatever, right? So it could be that maybe the community should chip in for the Torah component, but every, if parents want more than the Torah component, that is their obligation, right? But the fact that Torah believes that the community should be involved is clear. What this took get forces us to ask is, well, how far do you go with that, right? How far in our already taxed system do we push for special, right, for, to, to find space within Jewish schools for kids 
who it costs a lot more money to educate them. According to Yashiv, find the money. That's basic to what Kanye Yishuv and Gamla is. Because Kanye Yishuv and Gamla means make a Jewish education system that is funded in such a way that everybody can take advantage and learn. Right? That's what this means. According to emotion from Zalman, it's not quite that simple. Right? They both say, look, it's not the Kanye Yishuv and Gamla. And if the community doesn't have the money, it doesn't have the money. Right? But emotion says, but if it has the money, then it should come up with it, because that's staka. It's not Takani Yishuv and Gamla, but it's staka. It is a value. So according to Ramosha, I would say, right, according to Ramosha, basically figure it out. According to Ramosha, it's set up the school first. Right? Your first goal is the school. This is not the Takana of the school. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the money beyond that, so look, staka, there are limits on what you can demand, and then what can you do? But if you have the money and you just don't see it as a value because you say, let them learn in a regular class, Ramosha would say, why? Right? This is a legitimate halachic need. It's called staka. Rishon Zalman, I really don't know. Right? I, I really don't know. Right? Meaning, Rishon Zalman doesn't think it's part of the current Yeshua and Gamla, but he thinks it's part of an obligation of some sort of public health system. You'd have to figure out, well, how demanding is the obligation to set that up, and how much money do you have to spend on that? Right? And that opens a different can of worms, but I think it's an important model, right, which you'd have to somehow integrate. But like I said, I think that this question of, of special of, uh, you know, education really brings to the fore some of the questions that we talk about more generally in terms of the communal obligation towards support, supporting Torah institutions, but, but really, right, hammer home the complexities when you're dealing with some of the costs that, on the one hand, it's hard to say the community is obligated because it's burdensome, but on the other hand, the cost of not saying that is that those kids will not be in Jewish schools because parents can barely afford tuition as it is. Where are they coming up the money for special education? And therefore, this case and these three models, I think, really do force us to ask some of the broader questions, which, as I said, with COVID and the draining of much of the money in the community and in the schools, we're going to be forced to really ask these questions. Right? We already are. Right? And we should think about it through a Torah lens. We should realize that the Torah actually has something to say about it. Right? Meaning, so much of the discussion is just policy. Right? It's just like, but, like, there are actual sources that at least should help us, um, you know, paint a picture. Okay, so I just wanted to use sort of that as a mini-share to get thinking about this. Um, you guys thinking about this? Um, if you have more thoughts, you know, or if you have thoughts, say it now. If you think about it and want to tell me next week, that's fine, too. Closing thoughts on it.